They may have lost in the main bracket, but the trainers in the secondary bracket have sure been putting on a show so far to try and seek vengeance. Last time we witnessed a wicked battle between gym leader Misty of Cerulean City and Elite Four member Bruno of the Indigo Plateau that really turned some heads and showed that expectations might not always indicate what's going to happen in reality. Today we're going to see two highly aggressive trainers duke it out. Blaine, the current gym leader of Cinnabar Island versus Koga, an Elite Four member of the Indigo Plateau. Back when Koga was a gym leader, his gym was the closest one to Cinnabar Island, so we can assume that these two trainers were very familiar with one another before Koga eventually got promoted. Let's see how the matchup is looking by heading to their team previews. Blaine emerges in the loser's bracket after a loss in a surprisingly close battle with Agatha and has a sun-based team with a fantastic defensive core in Rotom and Torkoal and a few offensive tanks like Magmortar and Arcanine. Koga, on the other hand, defeated Erika to make it to this round after his loss to Brock, and has a solid poison team with Weezing and Tentacruel forming a defensive core and offensive threats like Toxicroak, Skuntank, Crobat, and Venomoth. Word has arrived that our trainers are ready to fight, so let's head to the stadium and find out how this Gym Leader vs. Elite Four matchup will unfold. Blaine, the gym leader versus Koga, the former gym leader turned Elite Four member. Koga is going to start off the battle with his Toxicroak, a great offensive presence from him, whereas Blaine is going to start off the battle with his Torkoal. So we've got offense versus defense here. A very interesting start to the battle here. Torkoal is, of course, going to set up the sun with its drought ability. That is going to be a little bit terrifying for Koga's team, although he's not weak to fire, of course, so he should be able to manage it relatively okay. Here comes Toxicroak with the Swords Dance, powering up right away against the, the uh, Torkoal. I guess Koga doesn't really figure that, you know, Torkoal can do much offensively against him. However, it is setting up with the Stealth Rocks here. Stealth Rocks actually does affect Koga's Pokemon quite a lot, and Toxicroak does have the dry skin ability, so the sun is actually going to hurt it every turn. That's a little unexpected there, but Toxicroak going with the Drain Punch, getting a little bit of recovery from that, so it's not affecting it at all. But the Torkoal calling out the, uh, the setup there, and going in with the Yawn to try and put the Toxicroak to sleep. It's going to be interesting to see what Koga does here, because if Torkoal starts attacking, that's going to be dangerous. He goes with the Gunk Shot, an even more powerful move than the Stab Drain Punch. That should, yes, that takes the Torkoal out. Torkoal is down, so a good move there. However... Toxicroak is, of course, going to be asleep now, and Blaine can start taking some momentum here. So a good sacrifice. I guess what Koga figured is, you know what? Torkoal is a very dangerous setup Pokemon and can set up the sun pretty consistently. So getting rid of that will ensure that this is possibly the last sun thing. But as we've seen, Torkoal is not the only Pokemon that can set up sun on Blaine's team. But perhaps Koga just wants to get rid of at least one of them. And here comes Charizard with the Air Slash on the Tentacruel now. Tentacruel tanking that pretty well. A good switch in there. However, the sun is going to lower the power of its water type moves. So it might not be able to do much on this Charizard here. Charizard going in with another Air Slash here. So perhaps Blaine just wanting to keep it in. Oh, and a critical hit on the Tentacruel. That is not good for Tentacruel at all, but it is going to get off the Rapid Spin. So the Rapid Spin taking away those Stealth Rocks, which is quite crucial for Koga's team. I'm not quite sure if it's worth a sacrifice here of the Tentacruel, but perhaps he wasn't anticipating that critical hit. None of us were, really. But here comes another Air Slash. That's going to be able to finish off the Tentacruel. So a very, very weird matchup. You wouldn't usually anticipate that a Charizard would be able to take down a Tentacruel, but that Sun was helping it a lot, and of course the crit was a big factor there. We're going to have to see how Koga is going to respond. He's going to set out his Crobat now, perhaps wanting to outspeed and take out that Charizard, but Blaine is going to switch into the Rotom. So if this was a Brave Bird, that is a very good switch because Rotom will, yes, will resist that. So a good switch there from Blaine, anticipating that massive power attack. Only going to do about a quarter on the Rotom, actually. So now Rotom will be able to respond with perhaps an electric move on that Crobat. Koga's going to have to make a decision here. What is he going to do? Yes, he's going to withdraw, but into what? He doesn't really have much here. A Weezing. He's going to send out his Weezing here. Now, Weezing is typically a physical defender, so this Volt Switch might still do some damage. Yeah, that's not a bad amount. Right about a third. And, of course, the Rotom can now switch into anything that Blaine wants to take this Weezing on with. A good momentum switch there, and he's going to send out the Nine Tails, and here comes the Drought again. Now, this is, of course, a dangerous situation for Koga here. Because he did eliminate one of the Drought Pokemon, but the Ninetales is the second one, and it's going to go in with the Fire Blast, powered up by the Sun. That... Yes, that takes out the Weezing in one hit. Weezing, of course, more of a physical defender, but nothing on Koga's team wanted to take that. This is very dangerous for him. He's going to go in with the Skuntank here now. 
Now I can, yeah, I can see what he's trying to do here. He's going with the priority move just to get some damage off the nine tails. But honestly, this fire blast is going to do some damage on the Skun Tank, taking it out in one hit. Fire Blast, powered up under the sun, Ninetales is a monster in the sun, and of course it can set it up for itself. Very, very dangerous there for Koga. Koga going in with the Crobat now. So we're seeing Crobat's roll here. It is a very good revenge killer because it outspeeds almost anything, and it's going to come in with the Brave Bird again. However, Blaine predicted it again, going in with the Rotom, but that Rotom is getting chipped down, so it wouldn't really be able to switch in again. Because if it does, then it's going to get outspent on the second turn and get taken out. So now, Blaine no longer has this Rotom to rely on in terms of the Crobat. We're going to have to see if Koga switches, though. He does! He switches again! Doesn't want to take a Volt Switch and goes into the Toxicroak, which is still asleep, I believe. It is! So this is going to be interesting here, because he, uh, Blaine can switch into anything that he wants to take on the Toxicroak. Toxicroak getting taken below half, but it does have the Citrus Berry. Citrus Berry bringing it back up, uh, up above half health. And now Blaine's going to be able to switch back out into the Charizard. Charizard to take on the Toxicroak. A good matchup for him, actually. Especially under the sun here, where the dry skin ability is going to hurt Toxicroak. Uh, but it is staying asleep for this turn. Charizard should be able to pull something off here. Going for the Air Slash, but oh, it misses! Will Toxicroak be able to uh, wake up now? No, it's not able to wake up. It did have an extra turn. So Charizard's going to be able to take it down, most likely, with the Air Slash. Let's see how much this does. It is super effective. Yes, and stab. That's going to take down the Toxicroak. Toxicroak could not wake up in time. Staying asleep from that Torkoal's yawn. But now, Koga sending out the Crobat. Now, here we go. This is an interesting point in the battle because, of course, that Rotom can switch out. He's going to have to take the Brave Bird. Brave Bird on the Charizard. Will that take it out? Flying versus flying. Should do a good amount of damage nonetheless. And yes, it does take down the Charizard. Charizard going down to the Brave Bird. Now, Blaine is going to have to go a little bit on the defense here because this Crobat is absolutely powerful. And Blaine doesn't really have a good way to deal with it. And we saw this Crobat pull off amazing things against Erika, sweeping towards the end. But now, Blaine going in with Magmortar. Now, Magmortar is Choice Scarfed, but it still gets outsped by the Crobat. That Crobat is unbelievably fast and powerful. And now going in with the Brave Bird on the Magmortar, doing huge damage. Massive damage damage. How is the Magmortar going to respond? Going with the Psychic now. That will be super effective on the Crobat and should take it down. Yes, the Crobat is finally down. Koga putting some good work on that Crobat. However, now he has a Choice Scarf Magmortar to contend with, which is going for a super effective move against most of his team, including this Venomoth. Oh no, this is going to be dangerous for Koga. Venomoth looks like... Oh, it survives on 1 HP. A Special Defense does drop, but it has a Citrus Berry. That wasn't even Focus Sash. What? I, I'm i blown away. This is unbelievable. Venomoth surviving on like 1 HP from the Psychic and now able to go with the Quiver Dance. However, will it still get outsped by the Magmortar with Choice Scarf? I don't know. This is... I'm just blown away right now. What is going to happen here? The Venomoth actually outspeeding. Surviving on like 1 HP outspeeding. Going with the Sludge Bomb now to take down Magmortar. Are you kidding me? That is... I, I don't even know what to say about that, ladies and gentlemen. Now we've got Nine Tails coming out, setting back up the sun. Perhaps Blaine is hoping that he will be able to survive here. Nine Tails does have a decent special defense, but I don't know if it's enough to contend with this Venomoth. Venomoth absolutely going on a rampage here, taking down the Nine Tails too with the Sludge Bomb. Is there anything that Blaine can do? Blaine sending out the Rotom. Rotom also, good special defense. However, I don't know if it's enough. Sludge Bomb on Rotom. No, it can't survive. This Venomoth is absolutely tearing through Blaine's team. But now Blaine sending out the Arcanine. Now, the interesting thing is that Blaine did not send out Arcanine before then. Perhaps he does not have extreme speed. It could be a bulky variant with perhaps Morning Sun on it for recovery instead. Venomoth, Sludge Bomb. Oh my word, what is going to happen here? Arcanine survives but gets poisoned. But Arcanine should be able to respond here with the Flare Blitz powered up in the sun. This should be the end of the Venomoth. Oh my word. Wow, what an end to this battle. Blaine ends up taking it with a poisoned Arcanine and recoil damage, bringing it down to 42 HP. Are you kidding me? This was insane. That was wild towards the end. Koga almost pulling it off, but Blaine pulling off the upset against a, an Elite Four member, actually being only a mere gym leader. Although we've seen some gym leaders pull off some amazing things in this tournament so far. That was a wicked end. If Blaine had had extreme speed on that Arcanine, it would have ended much differently, much quicker.
but it looks like Blaine does have that bulky variant on the Arcanine, and being able to pull off the win 1-0 against Koga to move on to the next round. If you guys enjoyed this battle and are looking forward to the rest of the tournament, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss the next matches. Before we go, I'd like to thank the patrons who are making this tournament possible. If you guys want to help further this series' potential and support it, the link to my Patreon page will be in the description below. That's all for this one, this has been Soul Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for more... True Power.